Okay. Here we are. Emma, I am so, so excited to have you with us today as we go live on Facebook. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Yvette LaFleur. I'm an intuitive energy healer with Healing with Yvette. And I'm here with Emma Dawn de Toro, who is, I've got, she's got lots of things going on. So I'm going to just read it all. An intuitive life coach who does life and career coaching, energy, body alignment, intuitive readings, and healing for pets and their people. And Emma and I met through a networking group called Fem City. And when I heard what she did, I, I said, can we talk? Because I am so curious about the work that you do with pets and their people, because let's face it. I mean, so many people have fur babies. I call them fur babies. And there are these relationships that we build. I, you know, one of mine is a, one of my healing partners in life. And um, so I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the, the scope of this. And I would love to know, first of all, how you got into working with pets and their people and the intuitive work. Hmm. Great question. I've just been clicking on a lot of little tabs here, sharing this with my Facebook group too. So I just want to say hello to people in the Dragonfly Den or on my page, if you're here and listening to so um, how I first got into this, well, when I was a child, I was deeply connected to the dogs in my family. So um, I, as an infant, we had a dog named Brinker, who I don't consciously remember, but as um, later in life, I got a golden retriever and I heard at that point that she was a reincarnation of Brinker. Oh. And that was really fun to have that experience again of a pet coming through to support me during a challenging time because my younger life was sometimes challenging. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I always had a sense, I've been an empath all my life. Let me say it that way. I've been an empath all my life. And that empathic skill of being able to sense and be, sense how other people are feeling and knowing their emotions also happened for me with animals. So we had dogs as a child when I was a kid and I could always sense what they needed and how they were feeling and on a very kind of emotional level. Mm. And then in 2004, I was in a rollover car accident that cracked open some psychic and energy healing capacities that I hadn't had before, which made me even more of a highly sensitive person. <laughs> even more empathic, even more intuitive than I was kind of uh, naturally, you might say. And at that point, um, I couldn't stop hearing pets and animals, right? It, it just, I, I couldn't stop hearing anything. So let's just be honest, it wasn't just the animals. <laughs> I could hear a lot of things all the time. And it took quite a while and working with a mentor to learn how to contain that, turn it on and off so that I was not inundated. My nervous system really was inundated with information all the time. And um, so I learned with some mentorship and teaching to um, titrate the information and only receive it when I was asking for it as opposed to all the time. And so I started working first with my own pets, who I'm pointing back here because I have two dogs back behind me, but they were not the pets that I started learning with. Um, <laughs> I had a cat at the time and a dog named Zoe and my partner had two cats. So I would listen to them and I would start doing readings with um, my friend's pets and energy healing with my own and I was a student really of homeopathy and flower essences, which are energetic forms of healing that are very gentle, very natural. Um, and I started using those with my pets. And in fact, Zoe, my golden retriever was the first one I used that with. I was, she was incontinent. She was about six months old and she was incontinent. She would just leave puddles of urine in my bed when we were sleeping. She'd be sound asleep. She'd have no idea what she was doing. 
And I mentioned this to somebody I was working with. I was working at a program in integrative medicine. And um, she said, oh, give her some pulsatilla. And I was like, okay, why? <laughs> she was like, well, it's good for female reproductive issues. And often young dogs, if they're spayed too young, they have some issues when they're coming into their puberty. And it shows up like this. And I gave her some homeopathy and it, I'm not kidding. It stopped. It just stopped over the course of a week. It never, it didn't happen again for six months. And then I gave her another dose and it never happened again. Wow. And I was hooked. Like I really understood then that, and that was well before the car accident. <laughs> um, so as I opened into the psychic capacities, I blended the energy healing that was coming through me and I was learning how to use the intuitive reading capacities that I had, and then the use of flower essences and homeopathy with pets, as well as for people. And I say healing for pets and their people, because those sessions are for both. I may be doing energy healing on both, or maybe just the pet, or maybe just the person. <laughs> Um, but I'm reading the situation and the relationship between them, right. And helping them communicate with each other and understand each other better to resolve whatever the situation is that they're coming to me for. Yeah. Because, so there's lots, I want to say to what you were saying, one with the flower essences, they're unnatural, right? Our body, human bodies, animal bodies recognize them. It's like the crystals that I utilize in the healing that I do, the essential oils that we use, they're all natural and our bodies of all, all natural bodies. Right. 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 Yeah, I'm working with someone right now with uh, willow energy and because the willow trees aren't necessarily all around me, I got the essence of willow to work with. Mm -hmm. Right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's powerful to, to use the flower essences. Mm -hmm. um, the, and then the other thing I wanted to point to was you talk about working with pets and their people. It, I would imagine, because I've seen it in my own relationships with my pets, mm -hmm. is oftentimes the stuff that's coming up is rooted in the, the human. But we, you know, we yeah. want to, <laughs> we don't want to take that on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, we, our pets are there in part to serve us, right? That's not their only purpose here, I don't believe, but they are in part to be our companions and to serve us and support and care for us in a way. And we are there for them in that same way. But um, so they are very connected to our emotions. They can read our emotions sometimes better than we can honestly, depending on how connected we are. And um, I think, so sometimes we have work to do on our own behavior that will help the pet behave better. And so I'm gonna actually give you another example from Zoe. She was great. She was my first dog as an adult, right? I was in my thirties. I purchased this golden retriever that I had always wanted a red golden retriever and I found Zoe. Well, I decided I wanted to train her to be a service dog. And I was struggling with codependency, people pleasing, wanting everybody to be okay around me. And I did the same thing with her, right? Fussing, wanting her to be okay all the time. And so I was not very good with boundaries with her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As you heard, she was urinating on my bed at night, but I wasn't making her sleep on the floor. Right. Right. So, I, you know, I had a dog trainer that was helping me during that time. And he was very clear. And, and at that time, my name was Dawn. And he said, Dawn, you need to um, be clear and firm with her. You're not harming her by setting a clear boundary and telling her exactly what you want when you want it. It's OK. That's not violent. Right. You're violent with something different but I was in my learning about how to set my own boundaries and so she was a part of that learning for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and she helped me heal from that as well as all the other people that got to be around me during that time 
it's amazing what the mirror that they can become. I had a um, a cat named Zara who had been abandoned by her mom because she had issues, right? <laughs> a friend brought her to me. Little did I know that Zara would be my mirror. And she hid from everybody. And it was in my time of life when I was hiding. Yeah. And the more I unveiled myself, the more she showed herself. Yeah. Just, and I, I got, like, I picked this up and I went, oh, she, all I have to do is to watch, see my growth is to watch her and I will see it. That's so, a beautiful example. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. They are our mirrors and they're our guides and friends and companions and some and our, our loves, right? Yeah. We just they are just deeply embedded into our heart in most cases. They are. They are. And of uh, Jasper, one of my um cats right now, he's the one I, I call my partner because he when he, he knows when my heart needs help, he literally climbs up on my chest and purrs, just mm -hmm. leaves that purring sound healing to my heart chakra. It's just That's amazing. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, I love Jasper. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he's he's a hunk of hunk of burning love is what he is. <laughs> I have a cat like that too named Manu. I mean, yeah, he's he's a love muffin for sure, although he's quite old and he wants less snuggling than he used to actually as he ages. Mm. So that's interesting. So one of the things I will say that we um, have someone coming on in a little bit and um, bringing her pet so that those who are watching and thank you for if you're watching live or watching the replay, we'll actually get to see Emma Dawn in action, having those conversations with the person and pet. So just want to let you know that you're going to have the opportunity to see that. But I will say that what one thing that really struck my heart when we originally spoke was we got talking about when animals are nearing the their earthly life and and nearing the end of their earthly life and they're mm -hmm. ready to transition and how as humans we struggle with that and you were talking about the work that you do for people and their pets during this time. And can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so it's a very tender time for humans. And um, it, that is in part because of how our culture works with death. Our Western culture works with mm -hmm. death, right? It's hard for us to be with other people who are transitioning for the long term, being with our feelings around that, being with our tenderness around that and honoring their process, whatever it is their process is. And I think for humans that translates over to how uncomfortable sometimes it can be to be with their pets during a transition time, right? We don't want to see them suffer. We don't want to see them struggle. It's hard to watch them decline. And Yet they have um, a comfort with the transition process. I think that we as humans don't always cultivate. We could have it. There's, there are certain cultures that do, right? But um, pets move through that transition process much more easily than we do. There's not a fear state necessarily connected with it for them. Um, their souls leave their body fairly easily, right? And um, like any animal really that's dying, they will withdraw and be more on their own. Mm -hmm. They prefer that process alone. So we want to care for them. We want to know that we have been a fantastic human for them and they got everything they needed out of this lifetime and that that they were well cared for. And almost in all cases, if people are on a call with me asking that question, you can bet they did, right? Because people who care yeah. about how their pets transition have taken really good care of their pets almost in 
all cases. They might have had an experience before you that wasn't so great, but your experience with them was fantastic. Um, so I find honoring the animal's desire for solitude can be helpful and also checking in with them to see when they're ready to transition. You know, I, I recently had a cat who was, set, who was 17. I actually have her brother, Manu, is still alive, but Dora transitioned about a week ago. Uh, no, maybe 10 days ago now. And um, they both have chronic kidney disease. So we've known for a couple of years that they were going to transition and it would slowly get worse and worse. And it would get to a point where it was end stage and there would be nothing we could do for them. And even making them comfortable would be difficult mm. because that's a dehydration process. Like right. the body can't get rid of toxins. So it, it's really just kind of, it's not physically painful necessarily, but it's exhausting, mm. right? It just kind of slowly reduces their life force and their ability to function. So, you know, we made a decision to support her in her transition and we took her to the vet. Although sometimes pets, I had a conversation with her and asked, are you okay with going to the vet or should we have a vet come to the house? Do you want to, it doesn't matter, right? To her soul. And she was fine with going to the vet. And I walked her through the process, both um, energetically, we used some flower essences to support her. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then sat with her afterwards, sat with her body afterwards, we asked the vet to leave and we're with her for about 20 minutes, just supporting her uh, with our care and supporting her soul really to leave the body and transition in to its next place, you know, mm -hmm. so there is a lovely ritual to it, whether they choose to, um, participate in a euthanasia or if they prefer to transition on their own. Um, and if that's what she had wanted, I would have done it as difficult as it would have been for me, honestly. Um, but she was like, no, no, this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> I get the drift, <laughs> you know, and that's not typically an option for humans. Like in a few states it is, right? We don't always have that choice because of the Hippocratic oath, right? That doctors take. I hope I got that right, but the, the word, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but we do have that option for our pets and just making that choice with care is one of the things I really enjoy helping humans with, right? To really know that they are, they're doing what is honoring for their own pet and honoring for themselves as well. Yeah. And they, I, there's so much about, I was, thank you for sharing that personal new, mm -hmm. like it's so new, right? Um, yeah, I feel the emotion and we are not a culture that is comfortable with death. I mean, and grieving, like we have all of, we don't allow people to grieve. We don't allow them to have their time and their process and whatever their stuff is around grief. I mean, I'm sure like me, you work with many clients who are working through grief and have Absolutely. all these people telling them how they should do it instead of honoring, you know, the, the space and the time and, and animals. I like the permission your not permission, but the conversation you're opening for humans to allow their fur babies that solitude. You know, that's because we often want to like be with them all that because we don't want to let go, right? So let me just be around you and mm. yeah. yeah. And knowing that, like, I think for me, knowing that I can connect with her for Manu, he's taking a lot of solitary time. Um, I can connect with them heart to heart, whether I'm right next to them or whether I'm three states away, right? I mean, I do almost all of my pet sessions um, from a distance. I work with all pe pets and humans virtually. So like 
based on quantum physics, there's no difference between space and time, right? We can be right here at the same time. So we can be deeply connected to our pets when they're choosing solitude. If yeah. we settle ourselves and allow ourselves to come into our heart center and then just, just ask to connect with them, to send that loving energy to our pet. It's not, um, that kind of thing is not Mm, special, right? It's not special to me. I'm not the only one who can do it. You can do it. All the people that watch this can do it. Like, like it's just about setting an intention and opening your heart and calling in who it is you want to connect to. It's a very gentle and loving and easy um, opportunity to honor their desire for solitude and for and our need to connect. And I would um, offer to those who are listening, watching, seeing the replay is you can practice that um, now. Like when I go on vacation, I can connect in with my pets while I'm away and just let them know I'm here, you know, I'm here. I, yes. well, I'm not, you know, physically next to you, but energetically next to you, I'm coming back, you know, we'll be back soon. So having that that connection that way. Um, yeah. So before we bring in Crystal, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you to share some of the different things that you have helped people and their pets with um, so that we can get a, a broad spectrum. So people understand that it's not just transitioning. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I've worked with several pets who um, have separation anxiety. Mm. But this can be very strong, especially in rescue animals who um, have maybe had a difficult time of it <laughs> before they've come into their current home where they have more love and stability. So I work with those in a very, in a similar way, I, a mix of energy healing, conversation with the pet, and usually a, a flower essence protocol that helps with that. And I'll say that that typically only takes one session, right? Mm -hmm. The flower, you'll use the flower essence is longer, but um, if it doesn't resolve to a place that you're comfortable with, then we'll do a second session, but we don't need to string it out over long periods of time. Often just a session, a short session or two will do it. Um, I've also helped animals who, um, I had one, um, German Shepherd, who had kind of a sense of vertigo, like there was something going on in the inner ears. Like I often work, I, like I really encourage people to take their pets to the vet and get the diagnoses and get the, the allopathic information. And I'm a support to that, right? And so we had some sense of what was going on with this German Shepherd, but we didn't know for sure. Like the vet couldn't even make a clear diagnosis. So I listened in for a diagnosis or at least a, a, the symptoms and what might have been causing it and did some energy work and was able to kind of get her moving and back on her feet again, even though we knew it wouldn't stop her decline, right? Like it was not something that was going to be cured, but we could make her more comfortable. And she did was able to get up and move around more for a period of time. And then she fell again, and it was very a very quick decline after that. So um, there's some of that. Um, sometimes I work with with pets for behavioral issues, um, urine pet cats that are urinating in the house or urinating in certain places. <laughs> I've worked with those. Um, I've worked with dogs who have like tried to escape, like they they have an escapist tendency. <laughs> They want to get out of their yard and it's usually related to a prior experience, not so much that yard. Um, and then uh, sometimes I work with just general, like, uh, I'm trying to think about what the kinds of things I've used for my pets who are like sacked out. They're so used to doing it. <laughs> they're like sacked out. I'm like, hey, could you help me here? And they're like, eh, sorry. Um, <laughs> So, you know, when they have cuts or abrasions or if they're ill, they have a digestive thing, sometimes I'll use um, flower essences and energy healing to support them in overcoming whatever the illness is at the time. I haven't had a lot of people call 
call me and book a session for that, but I do that with my own pets all the time. Okay. Well, why don't we um, bring Crystal and her fur baby in? Okay. And, that sounds great. Um, what you know is her name. And I just want to full disclosure, you know, her name and her dog's name. It's the only thing that I've shared with you. So right. let me go ahead and uh, hit the admit button. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe there she comes. There she is. Hey there, Crystal. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to join us live. Oh, there's oh, there she is. Lolly. This oh, is Miss Lolly. Sweet. How old is Lolly? Um, approximately seven years old. Okay. She's a rescue, so I'm not 100% sure, but about seven. Great. And you have, it looks like she's a chihuahua mix of some sort. About an eighth chihuahua, according to the DNA test that I ran on her, um, a quarter miniature schnauzer, a quarter shih tzu, and the other three eighths, they wanted more money. So I said, she's a mother. Yeah, that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> But so, when she's not really short, like she is right now for the summer, you obviously see the chihuahua a lot more. Oh, right, right, right. But if she's normally long haired, it would look, she would look a yes. little, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. She, she looks more like a miniature schnauzer when she has a long hair. Uh -huh. Great. <laughs> well, how would you like some support with Lolly today? Well, actually, I was listening to the session before I joined on the Zoom. And when you talked about the runner, she has been a runner well as the escape artist then has run and has to stay on a lead all the time or like be on a leash all the time because she runs off in a heartbeat um and the other thing that the original thing when Yvette reached out to me I was like oh yes L uh, because she had mentioned anxiety to me and I'm like oh Lolly has severe storm anxiety to the point that she has to be drugged for storms so okay. when you were start, started talking about the pets that wouldn't stay in your yard, that describes her to a T and has since she came to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, great. So I'm going to just get quiet for a minute and kind of tune into Lolly and see if, if she has anything or her higher self has anything to share with us to start. And then... Um, then I'll, I'll uh, listen for these particular things and, um, and then we'll start having a conversation, right? What works for you and we'll start talking. So I just need a minute to connect with her. Well, she is very excited. Oh my God, she's really quite sweet. It's amazing you can hold her still. And you're welcome to set her down. Now that I've seen her, I can work with her if she wants to move around. That's okay, okay, I was gonna say, she's not willing to stay in my arms. So. Yeah, that's fine. She can get down and um, I'll work with her. So the energy work has kind of, has started. And as I check in to hear what that's about, it's really about calming her nervous system. So this is not uncommon for pets that have come from rescue situations that their nervous system is kind of on high alert all the time, right? And um, so it's quite often that the first thing we work on is the nervous system and seeing for Lolly in particular, it feels like there's a, like some gaps like there are places that should be connected along her spinal cord that are not. So where I'm kind of uh, smoothing out that, I should probably turn on my video so I can see if you can see my hands. I can. <laughs> All right, so, um, so we're just kind of smoothing out the electrical system and the nervous system there so that she has a better capacity to link all the region, regions of the spinal cord. So you'll notice as I'm doing the reading, I'm kind of looking up and out of the way. <laughs> and um, it's just my way of listening. Sometimes I'll close my eyes. So 
that's part of what's happening here. So then I tend to move my hands into a, um, a position like this where I'm imagining Lolly in between them. So we did the smoothing. Now we're working more directly with her um, to uh, work with her energy overall. So clearing out some of her experiences that are still kind of stuck in a trauma state in her body. Um, it seemed like it, what it, what it seems like to me is when she was with her previous, one of her previous people, um, she got very bored. Hmm. Like that some of that running is actually not about escaping, which oh, it could be interpreted as, but it's like looking for stimulation, right? It's not that she's um, afraid or she's got to get away. It's that she needs a lot of stimulation to feel um, alive, you might say. Right. And some of that is actually in her, her nervous system. Like there's kind of a, um, something going on there in her nervous system and we might be able to work with that. So it's not so intense. Um, so any kind of, um, high energy activity that you can do with her, um, is really helpful to kind of reduce the running. Although, um, <laughs> it's funny. She's like, I'm not going to stop running. <laughs> I'm like, honey, it would really be helpful if you did. Crystal, your human would really appreciate it. And she's like, oh, I like that. <laughs> like she's she's really a seeker of stimulation. Right. So, and that's not uncommon for small dogs, but she has got it very strongly. So um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but those like obstacle courses you can do with dogs any of those kinds of things that can really stimulate her searching, hunting, uh, tracking instinct can help her settle down in some ways around that running. Um, I'll check in. I am hearing that uh, to check in with a flower essence at the end for that. And I'll grab my book on that before we finish. Um, any questions you have so far? Anything that resonates or doesn't, or you want me to go into more fully? No, um, it was funny that you say that she's not going to stop running, though, because my dad recently was like, oh, I've got her approach. She's not going to run anymore. And next thing he knew, she was gone on him. So. <laughs> yeah, the runner. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Like, she's like, I'm going to run. I'm going to be active. She she kind of compares. Comp keeps she thinks she confuses the two mm -hmm. that's the word right oh this is another guy you have huh yes and he is mr attention seeker uh -huh. he's a puppy <laughs> <laughs> so he's very much attention seeking. he wants to be in the middle of all of it yes <laughs> yeah. always right. event can tell you he gets in the middle of our sessions too Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. so um so yeah we can decrease the running we can help her understand that um it's scary to her humans right and that it would be helpful for her to reduce that behavior out of like care and respect for the human that she works with right that's part of what we're communicating to her um and we understand she really loves that stimulation and running and moving and all of that kind of stuff um so that's anything you can do to kind of give her that kind of stimulation and that sense of freedom. And she really, she really values that. So she doesn't really see it as like a bad dog kind of thing. She's following her needs for freedom and stimulation. And so as a, as our, as her human, helping her meet those needs in other ways can be helpful. Right, to be able to find ways to get that same energy out and meet those needs for stimulation and freedom. Um, 
All right, let me, is there more on that before I shift over to the storm anxiety? No. Yeah, no. okay. So um, I have a couple questions about that. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what the nature of the storm is. Like, is it that- Thunderstorm. Is the th and is it the thunder in particular or the lightning or all of it? Can you tell what, stimu what stimulates her the most? Typically, I notice it with the um, thunder. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so we know, and this doesn't take a, a psychic to, I like to say that every once in a while, this doesn't take a psychic to know this, <laughs> but that the thunder, um, the thunder really rattles their ears, right? We know that it affects their eardrums very intensely in a different way than it does for us humans. But she was a few years old before it started. It wasn't something that she came to me with. So. Right. Yeah, that's actually quite common as they age and the ears, ears get more uh, sensitive or tender. Um, and let me just kind of look at that and see if there's something else too. Yeah, it looks to me like there's this really uncomfortable way that it rumbles through her body, like through her nervous system, it, like the ears get stimulated, but then it stays in her body, like she can't shake it off. I keep seeing this image of, oh, she can't really shake that off the way that some dogs can. So um, some of the work we did earlier around um, connecting the dots on her nervous system on her spinal cord will help with that being able to kind of shake that off a little better because the energy can come in and move out right like it was kind of moving coming in and getting stuck um i think it seems like a, the flower essence that might help with the running and stimulation might also help um, with the thunder. Um, but what I am also seeing in her system is that it will, it may not ever go away as fully as we would like because her system is patterned to have this response now. Right. So it will, my sense is it will get better. Right. But for it to be completely gone, I'm not sure. Right. That, that feels unclear to me um, because I keep, what I keep seeing that I'm interpreting is that, and that is this place along her spinal cord where there's like a, still a blip, even though we've done this work, it's still connected, mm -hmm. but it's not a smooth connection. And the flower essences might be able to uh, flatten that out and they may not. It's, it, that's kind of what, that's what it looks like to me right now. She's incredibly receptive to the energy work. And I just want to say that most pets are because they don't have any judgment about it. Mm -hmm. They just have an experience of it, right? Most of the people on the call or on the live probably have experience with energy work of some form. And they're like, yeah, this is great, but uh, not everybody does. And so sometimes there's a bit of resistance that pets just really don't have. They're like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't met a pet that's like, get away from me. <laughs> So, um, anything, I'm going to pause there, see if you have any questions or any other area that you want me to explore. I don't. don't. Okay. So I'm just going to check in with Lolly to see if there's anything she wants to express. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm still working on her, by the way, you can see my hands kind of roll around here. We're still doing some work together. So this is kind of interesting. So uh, it seems like she has a bit of a split personality around her um, her brother, <laughs> right? She she kind of likes him, but 
she would much prefer to get on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she can tolerate him, but she does have a little bit of a like attitude. Like she would prefer to be on her own in the household. And, um, but she's not particularly mean about it, right? She's just kind of like, well, okay. <laughs> If we have to, you know, um, it's actually kind of kind of sweet, but um, it is kind of a split feeling, you know, like she'll she'll be with them. She, there are times she really likes them and there are times she's just like, really, could you just go away? <laughs> Enough already. <laughs> and I appreciate you sharing that. It just confirms what I already knew. Okay, good. <laughs> Based on her behaviors, but yes, I Okay. I'm not shocked okay. to hear that. <laughs> okay, good. I it usually isn't. I but it is helpful sometimes for me to just kind of pass on what uh what she's saying. Otherwise, she feels to me and she's communicating to me that she's quite content. Um just more activity is really the piece for her. More activity. She she can really go for hours a day. Hours. Like I'm not sure you could actually get her all the activity that she needs. Wow. Okay. Because she has so much need for activity. So part of what I do when I hear something like this is to check in. Okay, would she be used? Would it be useful for her to be in a doggy daycare, to have a pal, to go visit other houses? Like what could help her run this energy out? And I'm not getting a very strong thing on the daycare. Like it's not not so good for her to be in large groups of dogs uh, for whatever reason. That's not really her vibe. Um, if he really likes some kinds of training or he have a willingness to do some of those obstacle, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, those obstacle course trainings, she'd be very um, good with that and it would make her brain work. And that would be a good piece thing for her is to make her work for things. Mm -hmm. And that will cut down on her need for stimulation, right? Because she's got a very sharp brain. So anything you can do, like if she needs to work for her food, she needs to work for to get outside, she has to ring a bell to get you to open the door or something, anything that gives you an extra step. <laughs> I have a button that's been by the door for over six months and neither dog will use it. <laughs> so it was a or, Christmas present. Neither dog will use it. <laughs> God, I'm trying. that's her just being stubborn. Um, but, but if you are persistent, she, she may come around with that. Like, cause she, cause that mental stimulation will help her physical stimulation as well. Her need for running like that. So yeah, she's got a good laugh. That's all, that's all she's passing along, but I'm, if there's anything else, any questions you have, I'm happy to answer them. Like, oh, let me look at those flower essences. Hold on. Get that. So I work with a company called Green Hope Farm. I'm not sure if this comes out in the right direction for all of you, but <laughs> Green Hope Farm, they're in New Hampshire and they make a really beautiful angelic kind of flower essence. And um, the first essence, they have something called the Animal Wellness Collection. They actually have a thousand, thousands of flower essences. They have so many. But um, for her, I'm hearing gold, one is called Golden Armor. And that is not an animal wellness one, but is really a lovely um, essence to help calm the nervous system. It helps us, um, it's good for humans too, actually, <laughs> but it helps with all the input that comes our way, the electrical input, the noise input, all of that stuff, whether we can see it or not. So golden armor would be helpful for her. And um, you could just put two or three drops of it in her wa in the water every time you change the water. And it's fine for your other dog to have it. It's fine for you to take it, <laughs> not a problem. What about other cats? Yeah, the cats are fine. yeah, the beauty with flower essences and homeopathy is that they're showing a mirror to our electrical system. And so if our electrical system needs the support that it's offering, it will come into alignment with 
what it's showing. And if we're already there, it'll just discard the information. Yeah, so it's fine. And then um, there is one other. Let me look for it here. Yeah, there's, they have one called flow free, F L O W free. And um, it really helps move energy that's stuck in the physical body and stuck in the, and what I'm seeing is stuck in the nervous system. Um, and it can help them move past um, on uh, in construct, unconstructive kind of behaviors, physical or mental patterns of thinking. And this feels um, like it could be helpful with the uh, storm anxiety. Like that, it, certainly the golden armor will, but the flow free feels like it's supporting that work we did at the very beginning of kind of smoothing out her energy field and helping it stay that way. Um, the, the golden armor and the flow free, I'm getting to do that for about two to three weeks anytime you change the water and then after that stop and see what you notice right and if if you know it's a time of a lot of thunderstorms putting them back in the water getting them to her again um if you notice behaviors returning put them back in see if if that will support them again yeah what's his name this is louie louie hi louie <laughs> oh <gosh. laughs> <He's> so cute <laughs> <laughs> so, <He's a> mess. <laughs> I also just want to say I do not have this is not an affiliate of I like I'm not an affiliate with um the Green Hope Farm they don't have that kind of uh deal so you just order them they'll ship them to you and Molly's a lovely human she'll send you some information about flower essences and um how to use them and she does a lot of education which really I think um is beautiful yeah and I will say Louis was very interested in you because he kept standing up on the edge of the table looking at you. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Hi, Louis. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you so much for being willing to come on live and let me connect with your animals and offer some support for them. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I'd love to hear some feedback. So at another, you know, at another time, shoot me an email or post to this live and just say how it's going in 10 or 10 or 20 days, you know, if you think about it, I'd love to hear. I don't know that I, I will I'll certainly test her for the storms because I don't have much control over thunderstorms and I don't know that I trust her not to run off after the, the last yeah. what, six and a half years of experience that I have with her running off. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't want to test the running off part for sure, but I would hope to see a calming of her nervous system in general. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right. For sure. Thank you. Right. Thanks so much, Crystal. Super <laughs> All right. So um <clears throat> I have a question for you. Does Golden Armor and Flow Free? I'm like, oh, I need those. Oh, sure. Of course. <laughs> it's so it's very funny because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing some work with the nervous system right now. I like I just stopped coffee today. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, but I was I, as you were talking about the benefits, I'm like, hmm. Mm, I'm thinking yes <laughs> absolutely I mean we're animals too yes. right oh, yeah. it's an animal wellness collection we're animals we're human animals so I take golden armor on a pretty regular basis I'm a highly sensitive person it helps me to regulate my nervous system I've taken it on and off for I don't know probably 15 years you know since I discovered these in 2006 so that's kind of a long time <laughs> <laughs> you know. But what I was, what I want to point to is the, how spirit works, right? I'm yes. doing this work, right? We bring Crystal and Lolly in, you offer the, the suggestion for these essences and it just happens to be the stuff that I'm working on happens to be right. And that's how spirit works. 
Absolutely. Spirit, you know, the information we need for our healing comes from so many different directions. Yes. It's about listening. Yeah, keeping our antennas open. Right? Yes, yes. Our antennas up. <laughs> so tell, let, let's just share with everybody how they can reach out to you, how they can find you after they watch this live and they want to know more about you. Sure. So the, obviously the best place to find me is my website. And I got in on the website game very early. So my website is emma.com. So my first name.com. And um, so you can find me there. Um, I have descriptions of me, my background, um, and then the different offerings I have for pets and for people. The bulk of my work is actually with humans only. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love this gig with pets and people, and maybe this will be bigger. We'll see after some more of these lives. Um, so you can find me there. I have a Facebook page, um, Emma Don Toro, Intuitive Life Coach, and I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I have a Facebook group, but I'm not sending you there because it's likely to be closing soon. I, I'm. I think I'm moving on from the group thing, but I'm not positive, but I don't want people to start uh, flocking there quite yet. Um, and also I have a email uh, that comes out a couple times a month that where I um, teach by story or give information. Sometimes I give discounts on that um, for upcoming sessions or things like that. I do offer... Um, I'm just in the middle of a transition to uh, group intuitive readings. I've been doing them on my Facebook page or sorry, my Facebook group for a while, and I'm going to be shifting that. So if you're a member of my uh, on my email list, you'll get the notifications on where and how I'll be offering those drop in group readings. And they're, they're very low cost there. I read for five to 10 minutes for whoever shows up. You just ask a quick question and I listen in and give you an answer. So it could be about your pet or it could be about you, uh, but they're super fun. There's almost always a theme, right? Okay. If for all the people that show up, there's usually a through line. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So um, I would ask that in the live uh, video that you share uh, the uh -huh. link for your website, because the website will lead people to all the other things. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me put that. I'm going to put it in right now. <laughs> you're, you're so good. <laughs> and I, you know, I love that you, um, emila.com, right? You got in easy. And for me, it's healing with Yvette everywhere. It's healing with Yvette, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So when we can keep it so simple, okay. Um, it, it makes it easier for us and everyone else. Absolutely. Yeah. Emma is an easy name to remember. There aren't many of us. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Any last things that you want to share before we go? Mm -hmm. I think just remembering that you're I, <laughs> kind of a funny thing to say, but your pets are people too, right? They're beings. They are, they have souls, they have personalities, they have their own experience on this planet that they will leave. And like I said in the beginning, come back and reincarnate and maybe come with you, come back to see you again, right? Be with you a second time like Zoe did, um, or Brinker did. Um, so yeah, care well for them, you know? Mm -hmm. care well for them and uh, like we said at the beginning remember some of it is our work to do too right? absolutely so it's not always the pet that needs correction but sometimes it is <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a um it's a joint endeavor yeah yeah yes well i so appreciate you i thank you oh, for your time thanks. thank you for sharing your gifts with all of the people who watch this and will watch the replay and um, you are a beautiful soul. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But it's been such a pleasure to get to know you through Fem City and through this and our conversations and um, 
and I hope to keep that keep that going absolutely (laughs) absolutely Absolutely. and um, so yeah have a fantastic evening it's been such a joy to be here thank you so much